Hey, how's everybody doing? This is JJ with Deluxe Vehicle Detailing and Paint Correction. Today I'm going to show you applying a coating, but unlike, I am actually going to coat this front driver's side fender of a 2001 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon Hybrid. Um, I am going to uh, talk about some strategies, some tips, some tricks, some, uh, um, you know, personal protection, just everything you need to know you know, in, in order to do a coating properly and safely. And uh, so without further ado, I'm gonna coat this fender. Some of it on the lower section is gonna be out of frame. And uh, then while it uh, gets ready for leveling, I will uh, present, um, you know, things you need to know. <laughs> okay, thanks. First off, I have taken a Lake Country orange force pad that caught a door handle that was broken years ago. I cut some little slits into the inner circle, and I've already taken this cap and loosened it. And so I've got my Underdog Pro Teflon-based coating, not a ceramic-based coating, but a Teflon-based coating. Just like your fry pan, you cook some eggs, everything slides right off. Let me get myself a little more organized here. So it's got this dropper, which is fine, that is inserted into the bottle. I have taken this pair of needle nose pliers. All right, grab hold of this a little better. I have removed this before. It's a nice tight fit. The uh, lip acts to help the cap create an airtight um, seal with the bottle. So be sure and put your, um, probably taking you off here. So this is a three millimeter disposable Pipe pet. I have a little bit of trouble getting all three. It's graduated one, two, and three. I don't know how well that will show, but I'm going to take this down to two milliliters to start. Squeeze some out. Good there. These are nice so that you can measure the amount of coating that you're applying instead of just randomly squeezing and dripping out of the supplied little stopper. Try and get it pretty even. Whoops, drop the drop. And for where I'm going to be applying this on this front fender, I want to make sure I get all the edges. Now this is an auto fiber, auto saver half mitt from auto fiber, the company. And uh, it's thin. Here is their thin auto saver pad, but you can see it's about half the width or depth, perhaps you might say. Um, and so in between the uh, the body and the hood area and this fender extension it's a very very tight tight uh, area to try and reach so and I'll be explaining some things more in a minute but let me go ahead and start to coat this entire fender again sorry that some of this is going to have to be off camera there is a plastic lip I've already done the plastic on the wrap around headlights so I like to make sure I kind of get the edges first and then get the main body now I don't know how well 
this will show up on camera of the actual liquid of the underdog pro sauce I'm sorry if I'm kind of really in the way so the nice thing about these pads is you can curve them around in areas that are curved you want to with coatings do a cross hatch pattern i've got my thumb underneath here because i have just coated really this one section of the auto fiber half mitt and these jeeps this being the 2001 jeep wrangler rubicon edition hybrid has a lot of very intricate surfaces i'm now getting the edge of that plastic I'm gonna go back over that really super tight area again where these hood latches there's a recessed area in the fender you will never be able to reach that if you were using a foam block or a thicker pad. One more pass. Just to make sure she's all smoothed out. Okay. Alexa, start timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, starting now. Okay, so as I mentioned, when applying a coating, it's a great idea. Now, if you have a very simplistic surface that you're coating, just a lot of, you know, flattish areas and things like that, you might get away with just one type of applicator. This is also an auto saver uh, pad by Auto Fiber. There's a plastic insert in it, and it's kind of rubberized behind the very low pile microfiber pad itself. This allows liquids not to get absorbed so much, and therefore you're going to lose product, right? Let me get my cap back on the underdog. This pad is great. You're not going to tip the bottle over. You're not going to drop it and break it. Just smart. Now, Autofiber also makes a thicker pad. Uh, I kind of started out with these uh, initially. They also have a plastic liner and everything, but there are just a lot of foam in this, and I feel like eh, it just absorbs more. Traditionally, I've always used blocks like this. This is a very dense, hard foam, and then it has just a very light uh, foam layer, which you put your uh, microfiber suede applicator cloth and then you can just measure out your uh, coating and then for flat surfaces go along these are great i feel like this is the best option for saving as much product and not wasting as possible but all foam blocks are not created equal you know it's not a lot longer but if you've got a longer uh, surface to go this is by car pro uh, you're going to cover more area quickly. And when you're talking about doing every square inch of a large vehicle, time is money. You're going to do a little faster with a longer foam block. But there might be times when this allows you to reach somewhere that the uh, other one doesn't, or vice versa. So, um, I do want to let you know that when I say you need a lot of different types of applicators this is just one of my i'll show you the half mitt 300 gsm by auto fiber 
on the uh, finger application half mitt, right? Six pack. I believe you can buy them on Amazon. You can buy them from Auto Fiber, probably out lots of other places. Um, you do want to know your temperature of your surface. It is 83.5. That's going to make a difference in how quickly the coating is ready for leveling. I hope you can see. I'll kind of move this light around a little bit. Maybe it helps you see what I'm seeing as um, there's not so much of a rainbowy flashing uh, like some coatings have. This you kind of uh, go by tacky feel. It's more of a tactile type of, uh, you know, when, when it's time to flash, but it has a very long flash time. Um, in the proper conditions, maybe, you know, low 70s with low humidity, you might be able to go 20 minutes of coating or so before you start to remove the transfer material or the solvents that separate from the actual coating material itself. There's a carrier that is in the solution. So, I also recommend don't sweat if you're in working in a hot environment. I use all the time wristbands and head sweat bands so that you're not dripping. Keeps water out of your glove when the sweat goes down your arm and into your glove and then you reach and you could drip sweat onto the surface. That sucks. Have a lot of gloves on hand. These are 16 bucks for a hundred from Harbor Freight. Nitrile, no, uh, no uh, uh, dust or powder on them. You also, a little bit of PSA here. You want to be wearing a respirator, which I always am, except for this video. These masks are not good enough. This has a carbon impregnated dual layer cloth inside. You can expel from your mouth and nose the air out, and then it gets breathed in through these holes and has to go through a couple layers of, of cotton and also carbon. So these are good. This is by Fight Tech. I got this uh, idea from uh, Larry Cosilla from Ammo years ago. They are a great mask, but not good enough for coatings. You want to protect your eyes because the fumes and vapors can be uh, brought in by your eyes eyes and into your body pretty much right into your brain this is an awesome product that i picked up on amazon years ago it's for uh people who swim with their goggles right and so you coat the inside of the glass and then you don't get that condensation and build up makes it hard to see you might get away with safety glasses which fit your eyes closer it would be helpful but again not good enough you want to make sure that you've got a source of light so that you can see i can see personally from my vantage point i can see you know an ever so faint trace of what i call the sweat you know it's kind of those solution carrier transfer uh, uh materials that are not going to bond to the surface and you need to level. Alexa, show timer. You have three minutes and 10 seconds left on your 10 minute timer. So it's been seven minutes with underdog. Like I said, it's kind of tactile. Get a little section and feel the coating. It should be a bit tacky, not real tacky, but when you slide it, it shouldn't feel wet or smooth. And I'll tell you what, seven minutes, it is 78 degrees and 88% humidity in my garage. And I'm starting to feel the tackiness now right at seven minutes. So I'm going to start. Alexa, timer off. So you take, timer canceled. You take a low pile uh, microfiber cloth and in the same order, basically, that you started. If you were working on a much larger panel, that might be more important. 
So I'm in that little tight section. I use the corners that are kind of open here and I can stick those edges right into that tight spot. I can stick them and buff. Yes, I could have really opened the hood on this, but I have uh, coated other parts of the hood, just didn't want to mess with it. So I'm going to go along the edges here. I'm going to get some light pressure on the plastic trim piece, then go down where it meets the metal. And now I've got all the difficult areas out. And that is my initial leveling wipe. Underdog suggests a three wipe method. Leveling towel. I always put my used side down and start with a clean side on the next panel. So here's a little higher GSM. I believe this is an older style of Eagle Edgeless from the Rag Company. So again, I'm putting those corners deep down into that fissure, if you will, the crack between the body and this really wide extended Real well extension. Thing's got some big monster tires on it too. All terrain. BF Goodrich. Probably straight from what Jeep gets from the factory. I will mention that I gave the client very strict instructions not to allow the dealership to touch or prep the Jeep when he got it yesterday and to drive it directly to my house. Why? Because you do not want production detailers to do work on your vehicle. So there's the second method. So yeah, I mean a lot of times the dealership, they will just put your new car through their automatic car wash with brushes on it and they run cars through that getting those open corners back down in the tight places and they will just run cars all day long through there and then maybe have their you know detailers uh you know finish the job but these guys a lot of them are young a lot of them are inexperienced they don't pay them a lot and, uh, you know, some of you out there may be production detailers, but, uh, you know, I've been doing this since 77. The time and experience they've put in matters. So, just a nice final third towel buff. Be beautiful. All the U sides down. I count out to myself all eight sides of the towels. Um, and actually, there'll be four on the uh, two uh, Eagle Edgeless as uh, they have a low pile on the other side. So that'll just be a four count. So I'm going to just, you know, tell you that the odor of the fumes that comes off of the underdog is some of the strongest I've ever smelled. I've seen detailers. Uh, talk and I've read you know stuff about I think I just had a little spittle out of my mouth um, that they've been come overcome with the fumes they felt sick the next day um, they were probably not well ventilated um, I have an air conditioning system for the house which I also can use in the garage uh, by opening the doors and running some fans um, and uh, um, I've turned everything off. I have two big fans behind me, floor fans. One of them is a box fan. I put a, uh, uh, a 24 by 24 air filter for a conditioning system, a high-end one, 
and that way I can kind of filter my air. If I've done a lot of polishing and stuff, you can kind of clean the air in your garage. Great tip for you also. So uh, anyway, I think I've covered everything, but um, you know, just be careful with coatings. They all have uh, solvents and carrier solutions and you know, transfer um, uh, solutions and the chemicals. Uh, I will just, I've got the garage door up about a foot and a half right now for ventilation, but this was just for the demo. I'm about to put my respirator on, turn all my fans, turn the AC system back on, tell, uh, you know, the girl with the A name over there to uh, crank some music and uh, get this thing knocked out and get it back to my client. So I thank you very much. Please subscribe to my channel. I'm approaching a thousand. I'm trying to chug my way there. Give me a thumbs up at the very least. I appreciate you if you've learned anything at all. And uh, hit the notification bell. Bing! So that you get new, great, updated uh, videos as they come out. And uh, basically, I just thank you. You know, comment, share it with somebody. And uh, until next time, catch you on the flip side.